This video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be about my struggle with perfectionism and how prevalent it can be in creative people. If it's your first time seeing me, welcome to my channel. My name is Sid and every week I go over a new step in my journey to becoming a self-sufficient creative. And I hope to inspire all of you to do the same. So far on this channel I've gone over the importance of storytelling, steps for world building and character development, as well as note taking and other topics. If you're struggling with things like writing and creative blocks, I'll link my playlist up here and in the description so you can get some guidance. Like I said, this video is going to be a little bit different. It's been a little while since I've uploaded, and I want to talk about the topic of perfectionism and how it prevents people from being creative. So what is perfectionism? Perfectionism is a personality trait that essentially means that the individual refuses to accept anything other than perfection from themselves or the things that they create. Like I said, I've experienced this a lot. Often I beat myself up because I feel like what I'm doing isn't good enough. I feel like my art isn't good enough or that my music isn't good enough. Things like that. It even creates a mental block where I find it hard to make videos because of the fear that they won't be good enough. See, when I say it out loud, it kind of sounds crazy, but that's genuinely something that goes through my mind. And oftentimes it prevents me from being creative, which is the whole point of this YouTube channel. When we chase perfectionism, we're dooming ourselves because we're striving for a goal that can never be achieved. And we can't possibly be perfect. There's no way. And another issue with perfectionism is that it can often lead us to compare ourselves to others. Maybe some of you guys experience this too. If so, let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested to see your guys' responses. Uh, this is a big one for me, as I often compare myself in my videos, for instance, to people who have years more experience than myself. And what I do is, instead of understanding that they're at a different step in their journey, I often get frustrated or discouraged because my videos aren't as good as theirs. The same is true for other stuff, it doesn't just have to be videos, it could be like music or anything like that. And it really is a dangerous line of thinking, and it further discourages me from making videos or doing things that I enjoy. Like I said, the same applies for music, it's something that's really common for musicians. And a big example that I wanted to mention is the saxophone giant Sonny Rollins. The reason I mention Sonny Rollins is because he's an influence to me. As you may know, I also play the tenor saxophone, and Sonny Rollins is quintessential when it comes to that instrument. But his spiritual journey and his feelings of perfectionism are ideologies that resonate pretty well with me. But throughout Sonny's entire career, he's basically been put on a pedestal next to other saxophone legends. He's often compared to people like Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins, Sonny Stitt, but no comparison is as famous as his comparisons to John Coltrane. For literally 60 years, people have been comparing Sonny Rollins to Coltrane. And Sonny Rollins has spent most of his career mentally trying to one-up Coltrane, which is something that couldn't be done. Not because Coltrane was perfect, but because people's idea of Coltrane had his playing and um, it put it on like a pedestal of sort. It, it was artificially inflated and it put this artificial stress on everyone who survived him. It's like there's almost a burden to play like Train did. So if you combine this with the fact that Sonny Rollins is also on record saying that he's never really been satisfied with his playing, he's lived the most extreme form of the Zen, the pursuit of an unattainable goal, combined with the feeling of dissatisfaction with his own sound. In an NPR interview he said he found it excruciating to listen to himself. And this is funny because like I can definitely relate to that. But his playing, at least the way I view it, is on a whole different level than mine is. It's interesting to think that the musicians that I look up to experience a similar feeling of insecurity that I would as well. So what ultimately helped Sonny with his perfectionism and the pursuit of being better than Coltrane was his study of yoga and meditation, which helped give him a sense of mindfulness that he'd been lacking. For Sonny, playing the saxophone is a form of meditation, and it's helped him focus on things like his breath and his mind, and as a horn player, I find this extremely fascinating. So that leads me to some of the ways that I recommend that you overcome and ultimately defeat a perfectionist mindset. Keep in mind that these are still steps I'm working to overcome myself, and it's definitely a challenge, but it's also a work in progress. So the first one is to stop comparing yourself to others. It's important that you start focusing on your progress. It's difficult because by nature, we have a tendency to compare ourselves to what other people are doing. And you know, we compare ourselves instead of thinking about our own accomplishments and achievements. We always look at others and say, wow, they're so much better off than we are, or if I were only as talented as them, I'd be so much further ahead. And this is a pretty dangerous line of thinking as it doesn't accurately portray all of the great things that we do in our lives. So what I recommend, instead of comparing yourselves to others, Compare where you are today to where you used to be. 
be proud of the progress that you've made and are continuing to make in life. Life itself is a journey and everyone's journey is a little bit different. Also, we're all at different steps in that journey and we should be more proud of the progress that we've made. So another tip that goes off of my previous one is to either limit or curate your intake of social media. This is a tough one. So what I mean by this is that you should spend less time consuming social media and more time creating things that you think will provide value. Not only should you spend less time on social media, but you should also be selective about what kinds of content you choose to follow. What you see on social media does affect you long after you put your phone away. A big offender of this, I think, is Instagram, which is funny because I always link to my uh, Instagram in the description. Um, it's been known to cause extreme amounts of social anxiety in people of almost all ages. And it's mostly due to the fact that people aren't as honest about their own lives when they use Instagram. The platform makes us compare our own lives to the version of their lives that they want you to see. It's, it's hard to describe, but when you look at people's posts about you know their exotic cars or private jets and all that, those kind of things, it forces us to compare our lives with a fiction that people are constructing. It's a fiction that they want you to believe about their life. So I recommend that you stop following anyone that makes you feel insecure about your own life. Instead, if you do choose to use social media, only follow people that add value to your life and inspire you to be creative, which hopefully is me, and if so, You'll find the link in the description. If this tip helps you out, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified or whatever YouTubers are supposed to say. Okay, so my next tip is to set attainable goals around whatever project that you're working on. And be sure to keep improving as you work on new projects. So for example, let's say that you're working on an illustration challenge. A great example of this one is Inktober, which is relevant because I'm recording this video in October, pretty much towards the end of October, so people are starting to finish up the challenge. Inktober gives you prompts every day during the month, and you have to create an ink illustration based on that prompt. Each day, for instance, you could set a new goal for tackling a different aspect that you think you need improvement upon. And what happens is that if you improve for long enough, you'll eventually achieve an outcome that you're more and more proud of. You know, an outcome that you're more comfortable sharing with others too. So another thing that these challenges allow you to do is place constraints for how long you spend on a particular project. It's important to occasionally give yourself time constraints so that you can allow yourself to move on from a project. This kind of thinking all comes back to the 80-20 rule where 80% of the outcome is determined by only 20% of the effort. So what that means for creativity is it's better for your creation to exist, but be imperfect than to never exist because of the fear that it's not good enough. Utilizing SMART goals could be helpful for this. I recommend that you take five minutes or so and set up a goal that's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-oriented. And this tackles most of the important areas that I discussed. And this kind of structure should help you out with making definite goals that you'll be able to meet. Moral of the story, give yourself deadlines and understand how each goal plays into a larger vision for how you want to live. Remember that you need to create things before you can improve. Nobody is perfect on their first attempt and we all learn from failures and imperfections. Often we see the things that inspire us and we think that we need to create things on that level right away. But we fail to realize that people just like ourselves went through a similar journey to get to that level. And we need to go through a journey as well. Bringing it back to Sonny Rollins, he went through and is still continuing to go through his musical and spiritual journey. And for him, it's his journey of getting to a place musically that he's happy with. And another side note is that Sonny Rollins, lucky enough, is still with us and he's in his early 90s. And if he can still be on his journey, then we can definitely be on ours as well. It's important to be patient and to continue improving. And don't forget to enjoy the process of learning and getting better at whatever skill it is. If you like this video, feel free to share it with someone you think will benefit and hit the subscribe button. I at least try my best to upload weekly videos that'll help you on whatever step of your creative journey that you're on.